Introducing Nose to Tail, a podcast where we explore the world of aviation lifecycle solutions, insights, and more. Presented by Jet Midwest. Welcome back to the Nose to Tail podcast here in Atlanta at MRO. I'm here with Brent Wells, and we're going to have a little discussion uh, about what's going on with Brent and his organization. Brent, maybe you can start with some background and bio on how you got into the business. Aviation. Well, that was a, that was a fun way to get in. I uh, had a, an opportunity with a family member that uh, had owned a company, and uh, they passed away. Uh, my mother-in-law uh, had an opportunity to take it all over, and she called me and my wife in, uh, and we, for the last 14 years, have uh, uh, started it, cleaned it, owned it, and uh, brought it up to a seven-time championship company. Um, and, you know, there's been so many people that's helped us along the way. It's been really fun to learn. Uh, I have to mention people that have been really mentors uh, to me. Uh, the United Airlines, there's an engineer, her name is Margie Tillotson, and a lot of people know her, and man, she has been a fantastic teacher. Uh, she has really put me on the right track, um, and uh, through Monogram, the OEM, it's been an opportunity to know Ruben Membrilla. Uh, he's been in the business for a very long time, and uh, those two people really uh, helped me kind of uh, become uh, the expert we are today because they've thrown a lot of stuff at us and had us and and just let me make the mistakes and make the uh, and give me the guidance to move forward on it and and it's really been an awesome uh, opportunity over the last 14 years so really when you got started what was that core competency so the core competency uh, when we got started was uh, it was a little bit of everything but it was primary to waste and water components um, and uh, so when, when I came in, I came in with what kind of a um, Herb Kelleher, Southwest uh, Airlines business model, right? To do one thing and do one thing only, right? And to know as much as possible about that one thing. And then that's what you're gonna be known for. And, then, and so that's, uh, that's what we've done is, is the waste and water uh, components. And, and so people know exactly who we are. There's nobody that doesn't know the iHeart Airplane Lavatories people, and that's uh, that's who we are. That's fantastic. So, in the component repair business, over the last couple of years, we've all seen some some trends and changes. I think we're we're on a rise out of COVID. What have you seen from the repair side in the last couple of years? Wow, <clears throat> what a question. Um, so, one of the things, Patrick, I have seen is obviously coming out of the pandemic, you had such a surge. Of, of component repairs because people were bringing things out of the desert and bringing things back online. I can remember, uh, we're located at Tulsa International. I can remember 50 to 70 airplanes parked on the, they closed down one runway and had all these airplanes. So now we're bringing them back uh, into service still to this day here in 2023 that uh, we are really moving forward and having an opportunity to see such a large impact on more component repairs. The second thing that I think, Patrick, that is, that is involved in that is the OEMs are still lagging, um, lagging for production. And so people, instead of buying new or having, they're actually having things repaired a lot more uh, than they used to. So I would say that overall in the industry, we're still a little sluggish, and I think we will be through 2023. But the, I think 2024 really kind of opens it up and gives it an opportunity where things are a little bit more streamlined like, like it was in 2019. Um, so I think we're going to have a lot. I think 2024 for aviation is everything's going to open back up, and it's really going to be real in, in full afterburners. Yeah. We'll all look forward to that. Yeah, absolutely, I'm sure everybody will. absolutely. So from, from a technical side, you mentioned the aircraft on the ground. Did you see some adverse effects of those aircraft just not being in service, coffee makers or water and waste systems just not being used? Well, it's, it's interesting uh, because I had no idea the uh, what actually needed to happen while aircraft are sitting. I thought they'd just sit there and no, they had to be continually operational ready. So they would come in and rotate the tires. They would come in and, and start up the engines and all of this stuff and run cycles through everything. 
Um, and so while everything was sitting there, to bring it back online, they actually had to have opportunities to uh, to then, when things, when it was ready to go into service, things didn't work the way they did. And so we actually saw an influx of more uh, of those components. That's really good. And and obviously your components, a lot of them cross over from, from fleet type and even OEM type. Correct, so uh, if you take kind of what we do, which is a kind of lavatory uh, waste and water component related, even if you look at uh, 767s, 777s, A320s, Embraer E175s, everybody has a, uh, a bathroom or some type of waste or water components. And so what we find is that goes across the spectrum and uh, even into freighters. I will tell you during the pandemic, the freighters is what really kept us alive because what happened? Everybody was going on uh, and doing the uh, the thing that everybody did, which was shop online. The freighter business exploded. And so customers like FedEx and, and Coletta and UPS and DHL and all the other uh, types of uh, companies, um, man, it was just incredible. So where other people were seeing a little bit of a uh, drop, which we did as well, uh, we actually were kept alive by the freighter companies. Just amazing. So. In, in, in the business that's maybe got a finite number of items because you are trying to stay hyper-focused, how do you uh, expand business or how, how are you taking your uh, leap to try and generate something uh, better in terms of the volume of business and or continue to expand within the industry? That's a, that's a good question, Patrick. So one of the things that we have done is we have brought on more of the waste and water components um, on all, on many other aircraft. So when you think of potable water uh, tanks, you think of uh, uh, Yokohama. They're the number one uh, production company for waste and water components for water tanks. And so as we do this, what we've done is we've created alliances with all of the other uh, manufacturers and we have become their warranty global warranty shop. So there's no way we get El Al Israel, right? They're, they're airlines, but through one of the OEMs, uh, because we're their warranty shop, now we're getting business from them, right? So that's how we've expanded globally. We've also, because we've worked so hard to do what we do, uh, it's really expanded to so many of the uh, airlines through the Netherlands, through Asia, through all these, and so, that's how we grow, is we grow internationally. That's awesome. The warranty program, uh, what a huge change in terms of a dynamic within within your organization. Oh, absolutely. W was that a change because of the nuance of what happened during COVID, sort of just maneuvering within the business market? Well, some, uh, but prior to that, we had done so much work uh, with the OEMs that they and had meetings that they found value instead of in what uh, in in having an outsourced company. The other thing is they had an opportunity to understand that we did the same type of work they did in their uh, in their shop. But what they were unable to do was because they're an OEM, a manufacturer, they're unable to produce an 8130 return to service. They can do a certificate of conformance but they cannot produce an 8130. And so that's why they partnered with us because we are an actual uh, dual release repair shop. So we could return to service with the FAA 8130 and the Yasa Form 1. So that's, that's really kind of where that melted together. I know a lot of shops I've talked to over the last six months to a year um, struggle sometimes with piece parts. <laughs> has your, has, uh, has, have you seen that in, in that specific uh, marketplace that you're in? Absolutely. Uh, again, with everybody being behind in their production and manufacturing process, what we've found is uh, what used to be, I don't know, uh, 20 to 30 days lead time on parts is now 60 to 90 to 120 days lead time. Uh, for example, some of the products like, let, let's say something that's extremely important like on the waste and water components on the airplane is the valve at the bottom of the airplane that depletes the waste, that the trucks, the waste depletion trucks slash honey wagons hook up, right? And uh, they deplete the waste. Well, that valve itself is taking so long 
uh, and it is amazing, especially on the 737, that uh, what what in 2019 you could buy for 14 to 16 thousand dollars new is now today going in overhauled condition for 65 thousand dollars. That's because there's such a there's such a huge. Uh, shortcoming of production facilities. Boeing made uh, Safran um, bring on a third manufacturer to help get get ahead of this. So has this created opportunities for DER or specialty repairs that you guys have developed? Yeah, uh, it does, but not for us on that. It's been primarily for uh, the A320 waste tanks. Okay. So really, we, we try to stay primary to CMMs. Okay, that's good to know. We'll continue this discussion on the next episode of Nose to Tail. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Presented by Jet Midwest.